He said, well, that sounds like it's probably a stolen car. So for six years, I was the director of sales for Lamborghini Atlanta, and during that time, I sold a few hundred Lamborghinis, many of which stayed local. And I think when I started one year, we checked and there were 93 Lamborghinis registered in Georgia. I certainly increased that during the time that I worked there, and we had others that were registered in Montana and elsewhere. But over time, I became pretty familiar with just about all the Lamborghinis that were in town. And so not long after we launched VinWiki last summer, probably sometime in July, I was driving home from the office and I looked in the parking lot of the Target near my house and I saw an orange 2008 Superleggera. And I didn't think there were any orange 08 Superleggeras registered in town and I was going to post the car to VinWiki like a lot of exotic car spotters do. So I drove down into the parking lot and it was sprinkling rain so I snapped some pictures through my window but then I noticed that the car had a dealer tag on it. A reasonable explanation why it had shown up and I didn't know anything about it, but it meant that our plate to VIN system wouldn't decode the VIN from the license plate. So I decided, well, I'll get out and I'll actually get it off the car. So as I walked up to the car, it was fascinating. It was a normal option super legera, but it had ceramic brakes, which were about a $15,000 option back in 2008. It was a Rancio Borealis, the pearl orange color. It had the large rear wing, the extended interior carbon package, the backup camera, and presumably navigation. Those four options were pretty much universal to super legeras. But when I looked at the VIN, there was something peculiar about it, and it was printed in the wrong font. Now, most people wouldn't know the font that Lamborghini prints their VINs in, but I did, and I knew it was wrong. So that was a little bit strange, and when I typed it into VINWIKI, it didn't immediately validate the VIN. So in the U.S., VINs use a check digit, so the vehicle identification number, just like a credit card number, has a check digit that you can run an algorithm through, and it'll immediately tell you if it's a valid VIN. Now that doesn't work in some parts of Europe and in other parts of the world, but in the U.S. it does. It's a law that cars sold in the U.S. have to have a mathematically validating VIN. So that didn't validate, but I snapped a few pictures, walked around, and uh, got back in my car and went home. But the next day when I was looking back through the pictures trying to figure out what was wrong, I noticed why the VIN wasn't validating. In fact, it was only 16 digits. So in the U.S., a Gallardo Superleggera VIN for 2008 would start ZHW like any Lamborghini VIN, G for Gallardo, U for the U.S., 43 is for Gallardo Superleggera Coupe, T for an E-gear transmission, then it'll have a check digit, then it'll have an 8 for model year 2008, then it'll say LA0, and then it'll have four digits that are the build number. And so in this car's case, the U wasn't there, so there was no country identifying character, and that's why the VIN wasn't validating through our system. So I thought that was pretty peculiar, so I called a friend of mine who's the chief of police in a local town and told him about it. He said, well, that sounds like it's probably a stolen car. I said, well, that's fascinating. Let's see what we can find out. He said, let me ask around through the auto theft unit, see if anybody's looking for the car, and uh, we'll have somebody get back in touch with you. So I thought we were on to something interesting, and I wanted to keep digging through, and it turned out that a couple other people had already spotted that same car around Atlanta, and so we were able to sort of compile the history of when it had come in on a truck and what parts of town it had been seen driving in. And with VinWiki, one of the interesting things you can do is build a list of cars. So you can add all the examples of a certain car, like 2008 Superleggeras in the U.S. And, and one VinWiki user who aspires to one day own one of these cars had gone through and done just that. So pretty much all the U.S. Superleggeras were in VinWiki already. And we could browse through and see which ones made sense, which ones didn't have ceramic brakes, which ones were orange, because in 2008, they didn't allow any ad personam orders. They were all standard range colors. They were either white, black, gray, orange, or yellow, obviously in their Italian names. So we ruled out all the cars that weren't orange, we ruled out cars with cosmetic modifications, and we ruled out cars that had been exported, and we ruled out cars that didn't have ceramic brakes, and we got down to about 25 cars that this one could be, assuming that its VIN was wrong, and we knew it's that the, even the suffix, the build number of the VIN was wrong because it wasn't in the range of Superleggera VINs. So, after that, we went through and I ran the car faxes and looked across all the information that I could gather on each one. And we found out that only one of these cars had ever been reported stolen. And it was VIN, I think, 6668. 
A few days later, I got a call from an officer with the Department of Revenue, and they had been looking into this car, and I told them that we had done some digging, and we thought that the car was probably 6668, and he said, uh, yeah, uh, that we think that too, but we were a little surprised that you were able to figure that out. I said, yeah, and I told him how we'd done it and stuff like that, and he said he didn't really know much about it, but it wasn't stolen, strictly speaking, but it was probably misrepresented to an insurance company. Not a wildly uncommon thing, particularly back in 2008 and 2009, because at the time, these cars were just depreciating catastrophically. And prior to that, banks had been financing way over sticker. So it was not uncommon for the owner of one of these cars to be $100,000, $150,000 upside down in equity. So it was a hard thing for them to get rid of. And the most convenient solution, it seemed at times, was just to call their insurance and say it had been stolen and collect on their insurance and uh, potentially gap coverage as well. So he didn't have a whole lot more. He said they were gonna continue looking for it, but that wasn't really good enough for me. I wanted to find out more about the car. So I went down to our local tag office and I said that I had found this car with a dealer tag on it that I wanted to buy. Not untrue, I'm always interested in buying a cheap Gallardo. And so I gave her the dealer tag number and I asked if she would just give me the dealer's name so that I could contact them and see, because obviously the car wasn't listed for sale online or anything like that. And she was very reluctant, but I convinced her to let me know what the name of the dealership was. And I found out that it wasn't terribly far from where I live. So I drove by the place where it was and walked up and knocked on the door. And I, I said, hey, do you guys have an orange Superleggera for sale? And the guy who owned the place wasn't there, but there was a guy subletting some part of the building for detailing. And he said, oh yeah, it's right back here. Do you want to come and take a look at it? And I said, absolutely. So I walked back there and uh, got to have a little bit more of a look around the car and the guy didn't care. He was happy to let somebody look. He assumed the car was for sale because he knew that it was in the building owned by a dealership. But next to the car was another 2008 Gallardo. It was a Spider, And so we were looking around both. I opened the car. It had about 39,000 miles, which I think it had been stolen with under 5,000 or under 3,000 miles when it, when it left California. And so someone had put a lot of miles on the car. It had cheap tires and some little scuffs around the carbon diffusers and things like that. It wasn't in great shape, but it was uh, definitely a cool orange 08 Superleggera. So I looked on the door jam where there's the VIN sticker with all the manufacturer data on it, and it had also been altered. You could kind of see where someone had gone in and changed it, but on that one, they had put the U. So it was 17 digits and wouldn't mathematically validate because the check digit was wrong, but it was a full 17 digit Lamborghini looking VIN that was probably passable to all but maybe me. I can't imagine anybody else in the state would have ever taken the time to look or have any about a knowledge to be able to say that it, it didn't make sense for the car to be as it was. But I get to looking around the car and I knew there's no real other place for me to find the car's real VIN without getting it up on a lift and looking at the frame rail. But I look in the glove box and the owner's manuals are there. And whenever we got a new Lamborghini from the factory, we would take out the owner's manual and there's a warranty and maintenance book. And on it, there's boxes, 17 of them, to write in each character of the VIN. And whoever had gotten this car or purchased it as a stolen car and was using it hadn't bothered to throw that away. So I opened it up and look, and lo and behold, that's exactly which car it was, the one we thought, the one the Department of Revenue thought it was. And so I uh, took a picture and told the guy, hey, you know, have the owner call me. I'd love to talk to him about buying the car, stuff like that. Obviously, I never heard from him, but I followed back up with the Department of Revenue and gave them the information that they had and also told them about the other car, which had an identically replicated VIN. And someone had really gone through some trouble here. You'd have to have removed the windshields to install the new VIN plates. But they were thrilled with this silver platter case of auto theft and to discover. And uh, I guess they didn't have to worry about, you know, trying to corroborate any of the other information because it was all presented to them nicely packaged. So I talked to a, a, another friend on the police force that was in that area because it was a different area than the chief of police that I knew. And uh, he said that they were going to go in and, uh, and get them. And so I tried to talk to them a few days later and they were obviously hugely grateful that VinWiki had been such a help collectively to figure out what the plight was of these cars. And I asked him, you know, did the guy tell you like how he came about them or what he had found or whatever the case may be? Because over the years, I mean, I'll be honest, I've been offered to buy some stolen cars, stolen exotics, and they don't tend to bring much money because there's not that much you can do with them. I remember I got offered a stolen 03 360 Spider 
it was when they were worth probably 130 grand. And he said it was in South Georgia, wrapped in aluminum foil, because he wasn't sure if there was a tracking device that might have been telling the people where to come and find it. And it was exactly the same case as this, where uh, he had been upside down, couldn't sell the car, and rather than um, getting it repoed, he just reported it stolen, got it paid off, and then hid the car. He, he said, you know, you can have it for 25 grand, but you have to go and pick it up. <laughs> and uh, so obviously I was no, not interested in doing that. But you know, for plenty of people that might want to track car or to export something or whatever the case may be, there's a lot of fun to be had for 25 grand. And that was certainly what had happened here. But the guy who'd had the car for so long was in trouble for a lot more. So in fact, I don't even believe he was prosecuted for Grand Theft Auto because the cops said that when they got there, there were all these illegal drugs and weapons and other things like hidden in the walls of this car dealership lot unit, whatever the case may be. And uh, so they didn't really bother too much with the Lamborghinis, but I, uh, I was curious who I could try to buy these things from because theoretically they were going to be owned by insurance companies. So I called Lamborghini Newport Beach and I asked them to run the, uh, the actual VIN and to see who the title owner was. And they told me that it was uh, titled to Manhattan leasing and that the second lien holder was All Points Capital. All Points Capital is one of these banks that does secondary lending through the different leasing companies like Manhattan Leasing. They'll do balloon loans with a 35 to 55% residual in a 60 to 48 month term. And so I was familiar with them. If we had someone with not quite good enough credit to go with any of the other banks, we'd sometimes call Manhattan. So I called them up and I talked to the president and I said, uh, hey, are y'all missing an orange 2008 Superleggera? He said, uh, you know, we're missing a few cars. Let me check. He said, yep, that one's mine. And so I explained to him the circumstance that I'd found it. And he was extremely grateful, he seemed, and uh, told me that, you know, he'd send me a $5,000 check for finding the car, which I was thrilled with. Um, unfortunately, he never did that. I never heard another word from him. And after following up, he seems to have decided that it wasn't worth that to return his car. But it was a cool experience. It was a demonstration of the power of VinWiki, the way we can crowdsource information to achieve an outcome that other platforms, other sources of information never could. The cops were grateful. They've asked us to find other stolen cars, and we've made progress to that since then. But it was a great uh, experience, a great time, and uh, a fun little chase.